Good morning, friends. Welcome back to another children's message and virtual Sunday school video. My name is Lauren. I am the Children's and Youth Ministries Director at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Everett, Washington, and I'm so glad that you could join me this morning. Today, we are talking all about how God's love cannot be measured. It's immeasurable. Um, and while we talk about that, we will be covering one of the Bible's most well-known verses, John 3.16. It's part of our passage this morning. So get the kids, get a comfy seat, and hang out with me for the next few minutes, and let's talk. One of my favorite Bible verses and one of the most well-known Bible verses in the world begins with the words, For God so loved the world. And I was thinking about this verse and wondering just how great God's love is and how we could measure it. So this morning I brought some things that might help us measure God's love, things that we typically use to measure other stuff. So let's see here. Sometimes we measure ingredients, right? If we're making a cake or some cookies, I might use something like this to measure out the right amount of flour and sugar and milk or water, right? A measuring cup. So we could use a measuring cup for making cookies, but do you think we can use this measuring cup to measure God's love? In Psalm 23, the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My cup runneth over, meaning my cup overflows. So if our cup runs over with God's love, I don't think we could use a measuring cup to measure God's love, right? Because it'll just overflow. Okay, so measuring cup is a no. Let's think of something else. If we were building something, what do we use to measure length, width, and height of different things? Something like this, right? A tape measure. I wonder if we might use a tape measure to measure God's love. Do you think we could do that? In Psalm 108, the Bible tells us that God's love is higher than the heavens. I don't think we could use a tape measure to measure all that way, do you think? So, tape measure's a no-go too, I think. What's something else that we measure? We measure time. How do you measure time? A clock or a watch, right? I've got a watch that I wear every day here. There's probably some people that use their watches to measure how long a church service will take. <laughs> I wonder if we could use a watch to measure how long God's love will last. The Bible tells us in Psalm 103 that God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. And that means from the beginning of time to the end of time, which goes on forever. Wow. If God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, guess we can't really measure it with a watch, right? Because that just means it goes on forever. The rest of that verse that I started earlier with for God to love the world completes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. How do you measure a love like that? Do you think you even can? No, right? We don't measure it because we can't measure it. And we don't need to, but we do need to experience it. And how do we experience God's love? First, we have to accept it and say, God, I see that you love me, and I know that I am worth loving. Help me to understand that love and live in it and experience it, and then in turn, let that change my life so that I can share your love with the rest of the world and everyone I talk to and meet. My prayer for you today is that, from Ephesians 3, that you may understand how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love really is. May you experience it, though it is so great you will never fully understand it. We say that God's love is incomprehensible. That means we just can't understand it. In our brains, it doesn't make sense, and it truly doesn't to us. But we just have to know that it's there, that God loves us, and let that change us and transform us so that we are the creations that God wants us to be, and so we can go out into the world and share his love. Sound like a plan? All right, let's pray, and then we'll move on with virtual Sunday school. 
Hold your hands, close your eyes, and bow your heads with me. Dear God, we thank you so much for your love, a love that's so great. You gave your one and only Son so that we could have eternal life, that we could have this relationship with you, that we could feel your love and share your love. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, up next we're going to read our lesson out of the Bible. Alrighty guys, let's read our lesson on the Bible this morning. We are reading from John chapter 3 verses 14 through 21. If you're following along in a children's Bible, it'll probably be called For God So Loved the World, something like that. But you should be able to find it with that scripture reference. John chapter 3, 14 through 21. And this is all red letter and that means Jesus is the one speaking here. So this is Jesus speaking directly to us. Let's read. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. All right, up next, I'll have some discussion questions for you. All right, now that we've read our lesson, I've got some discussion questions for you guys. Uh, these are just jumping off points, so feel free to use one or all of them, skip around. Um, they're just to get some conversation flowing about today's lesson with the family at home today. You can also find these on the downloadable PDF that you will find linked in the video description box and where we post this video on our website, pplc.org. So that's available to you as well. So here we go. Here's some discussion questions for you guys. Number one, according to Jesus in this passage, who can have eternal life? Number two, is God's love limited to certain people or open to all? Number three, What's the one thing you need to do to have a relationship with God? And remember, God's love is free. Number four, what do you think eternal life with Jesus is like? Number five, read verse 21 again, and I'll read it here for you. Um, but those who do what is right come to the light so that others can see that they are doing what God wants. How can we step into the light to showcase and share what God has done? So those are our discussion questions for this morning. And like I said, you can print that off at home from that downloadable PDF if you'd like. Up next, uh, let's do a craft. Craft time, yeah. All right, so as usual, we've got a coloring page for you this morning. Uh, you can find that linked in that uh, PDF in the video description box um, and today's is pretty cool it's the, the earth and a cross and in big bold letters for God so loved the world John 316 so feel free to download print that out at home in color that is available to you uh, for today's main craft you're also going to find the template linked in that PDF um, and that'll take you to truewaykids.com and it's a lesson on Nicodemus and it has you're gonna have to download the whole Sunday school lesson, but within that there's this craft and there's some other cool crafts. So maybe you'll want to do those as well, but truelykids.com want to give them credit for that, obviously. But the craft specifically that we're doing this morning is this uh, hand holding the world heart craft here. So the template will have a sheet with the hands and the heart that you will color and cut out. Uh, and then you'll, uh, print off the, the sheet with uh, that has the earth on it, color and cut that out. And then you basically just glue it together. 
with the hands holding the world and then in this heart you can see that it has John 3.16 printed on the middle of it. So this is, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. So you can color this, uh, cut out the shapes, glue them all together. So you basically need just the template printed out, some crayons or markers, and some scissors and glue, a glue stick. And then you can put that up as a reminder that God loves the entire world and it's a free gift to us and that he wants us to take that love and share it with everyone that we know. All right, up next, let's close in prayer together. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, had some good discussion, and had fun making those crafts this morning. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope you join me next week as well. Uh, don't forget to check out our online virtual worship where you can catch Pastor Gibbs' sermon on there. And yeah, that's all I've got for you. Let's close in prayer together. Hold your hands, close your eyes, and bow your heads with me. Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you uh, for setting apart this day for us to, uh, to rest uh, physically and spiritually to learn more about you and worship you. Um, we pray that you remind us of your love every day and that your love will transform us inside and out so that we want to do what you want us to do, to be what you want us to be and, and show the whole world what your love has done for us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Have a great day. Bye.